cars to drive on this road. It's, it's a driver's car. You know, all these new cars, they have stability control. They have traction control. There's none of this in this car. It's just raw. This is my 2000 Cobra R. What's special about this car, of course, they only made 300 cars in total. Uh, this is chassis number 165. Uh, this particular one was repainted in 2013. Uh, in August, I repainted it a Ferrari color. Um, it's called Rosso Scuderia. I wanted something a little bit brighter than the original Performance Red. Uh, this car has been a race car its entire life, and I bought it with 3,400 original miles on it, but they were all race miles. So in a sense, when I got the car, I, I wanted to do, of course, some track driving, but I also wanted it to be a little more street friendly. And here is the uh, beating heart. We punched the internals out from a 5.4 liter motor, and it is now a 5.8. We did some mild head work. Uh, we built a custom set of headers for it. Um, and it's got some very, very light comp cams in it. You, for a nice little bump, but some extra power. I've actually had a confirmed zero to 60 of uh, four seconds even, uh, which isn't too bad, uh, for again, for a 15-year-old Mustang. Uh, we did break in the motor on a, dy uh, on a engine dyno. The car made 440 horsepower, 485 foot-pounds of torque, and once we got that in there behind that Viper spec T56 transmission, we put a new differential in it, a wave track locker, drive shaft shop axles, 373 Ford racing gears. The, th the thing really came alive, and in my opinion, I, I think that it, it's really the car now that it should have been back in 2000. Now you don't see a lot of them driving around, of course. I would say at least 90% of these things are in museums or parked in someone's garage. But uh, hey, I like to drive my cars. At the end of the day, it is a car. The people who know, they see it driving on the street and it's they just stare at it as we go by. First thing you see is these hood pins, and I get a lot of mixed reviews on these. I don't really like them, to be completely honest with you, um, but they've actually saved me. I was doing 142 miles an hour on the stretch at Willow Springs, and the hood latch actually popped, and it slammed up against the pins, so I'm very thankful that they're there. After that experience, I, I learned to love them rather than to hate them. cage in it. It does make it a little difficult with some blind spots on occasion and, and getting in and out of the car. Um, the other thing that makes it not so streetable is there's no windshield wipers or components. Ford basically wanted to build this as a streetable track car. So of course the no air conditioning, the no heat shields, uh, you know, the no radio, no wiring for the radio, all that was standard. Uh, not only that, what SVT did, of course, back when they were making this car, they did have Eibach Springs build a special set of springs for this car that really stiffened the ride up without making it too low so the splitter would still clear normally. The springs dropped the car one and a half inches in the front and one inch in the rear. They also added Bilstein adjustable struts in all four corners. Uh, and uh, additionally, they, they upgraded the roll bars and the end links just to beef up the suspension to handle a little bit more. It's got a battery cutoff. Um, we installed the switchboard for the ignition auxiliary. And this last one uh, is a external differential pump to keep the rear differential fluid nice and cool. Also, this car has a full fire system. If anything happens, all you gotta do is pull the fire lever right there in the dash. It sprays out the fire retardant foam. This 
car doesn't have a normal gas tank. It actually has a, a fuel cell. It is 21 gallon fuel cell and I will say it absolutely needs it because this car averages about six miles per gallon. Uh, it gets about 170 miles to a tank of gas. That's not so good. <laughs> battery has been relocated to the rear of the car. Um, however, most people choose to put it back a little bit further for ease of access. This is the big wing that there's a lot of controversy over. People either love it or they absolutely hate it. And most of the time it's the latter of those two. I personally don't really care for it. Um, mostly because when you look in the rear view mirror, this is all you see. You can't really see the person behind you, you just see a big red wing sticking up. Um, however, this is actually, for however atrocious it might be, it is quite functional. Um, they, during testing, they found the car was incredibly unstable. It speeds over 170 miles an hour. And you can actually feel the aerodynamics uh, on this car, such as the, the wing and the splitter. You can actually feel it work at higher speeds. We've been through uh, Lamborghinis and Ferraris and a lot of other interesting cars and um, through it all the maintenance for the exotic cars um, is double. Double, even triple the cost and sometimes they run, sometimes they don't. You know, at the end of the day this thing has never actually failed me and, and to be honest with you, I've, I've had more fun in this than anything else. I want this to be my son's car one day, you know. I, I really love this car. I really do. I have a weird attachment with it. Considering I haven't had it for very long, I feel like I've had it for a lifetime. I, I've literally put virtually this entire car together by, with my friend and I with my own hands, or our own hands. Uh, so I know virtually every square inch of this car and I trust it to do what I want it to do. This car was just specifically designed and built by SVT to, just to be the baddest naturally aspirated Mustang available on the market. I literally live, eat, and breathe cars all day, every day. All of my friends are all car people. All of my associates are all car people. It's not even a hobby anymore. It's really become a complete lifestyle for me.